So just two days ago we got that Ubisoft Forward gameplay showcase which was about 30 minutes of just raw gameplay itself and I made a video on that so check that out if you have not. Now I have some exclusive footage of other Assassin's Creed Shadows gameplay. Well I say exclusive but I'm sure you might have already seen a few other YouTubers show this gameplay but I figured I would also chip in and give my take on it because there were some exclusive bits of combat and other things that you might not have seen. This is definitely going to be a shorter video but I figured it's worth talking about so let's just get into it. So right off the bat with this footage provided by Ubisoft, we'll first see some exclusive gameplay from Yasuke and then later on we'll go over some Naoi gameplay as well. Now here we can see a rather interesting ability that Yasuke has where he can quite literally shoulder bash you destructible environments. Now I'm like 90% sure that this is not a skill as you can see at the bottom where he still has his 3 adrenaline points after using the shoulder bash. Here we get the first look at the rifle Yasuke is able to use which is called a Teppo or a Tanigashima Teppo which is classed as a long rifle which fun fact was a weapon given to Japan by the Portuguese around 1543 and we already know Yasuke's story in the game starts him off as a Templar or rather a bad person and later on he allies with Naue. So I guess this would be one of those weapons given to him at the start of the game. Similar to how Naue will receive her hidden blade at the start too. Now I don't think I'm really going to use this rifle that much in the actual game as it does seem a bit boring if I'm being honest. After all, I like these games for their melee combat and I'm not really trying to stay at a distance and one shot somebody in the head, where's the fun in that? I guess I will use it for shooting explosive barrels or pots to blow up enemies in the area, but apart from that I don't think it's my personal preference. Now one thing I want to focus on here is the melee combat and how important it seems like parrying will be. It seems like once that light blue icon appears on an enemy's weapon, that would be the perfect time to parry their attack. Now I'm not sure what the difficulty of this footage is, but I'd assume it's probably on either the lowest or normal for the sake of the showcase because the parrying window does seem a bit forgiving. I already know these rifle enemies are going to be a pain in the ass to deal with, especially if they're on rooftops just shooting from above. Of course once again, there's that decapitation that looks really good and I'm glad they brought back the gore. Also just take a look at this very unnecessary showing of a shoulder bash. It's a bit pointless I must say but I guess it's just to showcase that special move Yasuke is able to do. Now let's move on to the footage that we received for Naoi. Now right off the bat, this is the same castle in the gameplay showcase at Ubisoft Forward, but it's cool to see it from this perspective, especially with the dynamic weather which we knew will be a feature for this game. Just seeing the trees swaying the wind, the grass and even the cloth physics of the characters is pretty cool. I just hope it's not too demanding for my PC, but I'm pretty sure a 7800 XT can run it with no problems. No jinx. Okay now here, I want to talk about this. So I've been very positive with this game so far as shown in all of my videos, but I feel like Naoi does a bit too many unnecessary flips and whatnot. I mean is this even needed? You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of Leon from Resident Evil doing the most useless backflip I've ever seen and even Mars Morales in the Spider-Man game doing a random backflip too. The same can be said for now is front flips. This just looks like it slows her down. Now apart from that, one thing I thought was pretty cool was the failed assassination attempt from Naoi. It seems like it's pretty much confirmed that these big brute type of enemies are immune to being assassinated from behind which I guess makes the most sense. How do you guys feel about this? I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that don't agree with this feature. It's pretty cool how Naoi gets tossed into the dynamic props and they react with how she interacts with them. Here we can see some raw combat from Naoi which I don't think we've seen yet because the Ubisoft Forward event was showcasing stealth gameplay for Naoi. Her animations are pretty cool in this fight and even her finisher animation too. I would have said it's not that brutal but seeing as Yasuke literally decapitates his enemies and Naoi slices her enemy's neck it is still pretty brutal. Now here we can see the kunai in action. Oh and before I get into that it's now confirmed that this is a bell tool but we have not seen it in action yet so nobody really knows how this could work in the game. The kunai performs as you expect, one shot in the head and it's iconic for stealth. Take out two guards and deal with the one right below, your standard stealth stuff. We also get some more kusiragama combat which I already know is going to be my favourite weapon in this game, especially with how many different playstyles it offers. This animation is one of my favourites, going through the legs and face smashing it with the spike of the weapon, that's pretty brutal. And the last piece of gameplay that I want to show you is one of Naoi's special moves, which I believe is this one, and the animation for this is pretty cool cool. It's like a black and white slow motion shot of repeatedly stabbing the enemy from behind. It does seem like it does not do that much damage though so I'm not sure what's going on there but visually it looks badass. So yeah apart from gameplay I did get these cool looking shots of the actual game world itself and it does look pretty sizable. We got the narrow lakes where I'd assume we can use small boats to traverse. We got a beautiful shot of the winter and now we're looking at a distant castle. This is pretty cool to see because remember this exact shot will look entirely different in a different season like spring or summer. Also this is a bit random but this right here I can already tell you that this is a very obvious leap of fate spot in the water below. So yeah the rest is just other random shots but I want to focus on this. This is a boat which sounds pretty obvious 
obvious to say, but it's not an ordinary boat. I'm 95% sure that this is a wasan, which was a boat used back then for transportation, fishing or ferrying across rivers and coastal waters. Now my question is, I wonder if we'll be able to use these boats to travel from point A to point B. I don't see why not. Also shout out to this random Tory gate that's just chilling on a rock. Bit random, but we move. You know, one thing I've noticed that all of these shots have in common is the amount of trees. It certainly does seem like there's an abundance of them. Is this Ubisoft showing us the next gen capabilities and them abusing the foliage? Maybe. And the last thing I want to show you is this clip. This is showcasing the season change in the game and I thought it was cool to see, especially with how winter looks. Also is it just me or does this layer of trees look like we'll see a return of tree parkour? It does certainly look like it, but who knows. So yeah that's pretty much all I want to share with you guys in this video. Now that you've seen 30 minutes of gameplay at Ubisoft Forward and also some of the stuff in this video, how are you now feeling about Assassin's Creed Shadows? Are you excited? Are you skeptical? Or do you just not care? Let me know down in the comments below. Also be sure to enter my giveaway for Assassin's Creed Shadows if you have not. It ends on August the 1st and press the link in the description if you're interested. Anyway, with all of that said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Ranger again. Yeah. <laughs>